All right, now we're getting into the realm of some of the other gross uh, sections of this uh, chapter. Uh, but funny enough, we'll be able to reference things from chapter 7. So the statement is, suppose you embed some free charge in a piece of glass. About how long would it take for the charge to flow to the surface? B. Silver is an excellent conductor, but it's expensive. Suppose you were designing a microwave experiment to operate at a frequency of 10 to the 10 hertz, or gigahertz, um, 10 gigahertz. Uh, how thick would you make the silver coating? C. Find the wavelength and propagation speed in copper for radio waves at 1 megahertz. Compare the corresponding values in air or vacuum. All right. So uh, for this, what we need is um, to find a characteristic time. And that's given by tau equal epsilon over sigma, where sigma was the conductivity. Epsilon is the ratio of the uh, permittivity of free space, or I forget which one it is. And then uh, the dielectric constant or relative permittivity, so epsilon r. Uh, again, sigma here is the conductivity, rho is the resistivity, so substitute them in, push it through. What we see is that this is equal to rho epsilon naught um, n of glass squared, approximately, and that these were all found from tables in the book. Um, so if we have the resistivity at 10 to the 12 for uh, glass, I believe it was, yeah, and we know what epsilon naught is. And we know that the index of refraction is 1.5, roughly. Then we see that the characteristic time is about 19.9 seconds. Note that the index of, refra index of refraction is typically around 1.5. And the resistivity of glass listed was in the range of 10 to the 9 and 10 to the 14 ohm meter. So I just picked the middle value, roughly. And hence the answer could be off by several factors. Um, uh, we'd have to have more specific data for that, but taking the middle or average, whatever you want to do. Um, now for the silver, what we need to do is find the, uh, skin depth. Okay. So that's where the things fall off at whatever E. And so that was D equal one over Kappa or Kappa inverse, which was found to be this really nasty, um, formula which we kind of tinkered with a few questions ago when we had the complex uh wave uh number and this is part of the this is the imaginary part of that uh it has physical ramifications of course so we just plug it in however this thing is a very messy so what we first need to do is approximate it uh what we what we're trying to do is approximate that uh sigma over epsilon omega in the first radical and what this is, is after we plug in resistivity for sigma, and uh, we plug in the frequency for omega via 2 pi nu, what we see is that that is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the 8th. Okay, so what we first established here is that sigma is much, much greater than 1, and, that is much, and that's much greater than uh, epsilon uh, times omega. Okay, clearly... It's a big number, and so what we can do is approximate that first radical uh, by just sigma squared, and since sigma squared is, since sigma is so much greater than epsilon omega, we can just approximate that to sigma squared, and then one plus sigma squared is just approximately equal to sigma squared, since sigma is so much greater than one, and so the square root of sigma squared is equal to sigma. If we plug that in now with the approximations, we get uh, sigma minus one to the one half, another square root. Um, this ain't gonna do much. So we know that again, because sigma is so much greater than one, that's still approximately equal to sigma. Again, if we just take the square root of sigma, now we have one big square root to take into account. Um, here though, we have uh, omega squared since we're pushing that in, and that gives us omega omega epsilon mu sigma. Uh, and that's the one half power, but again, we're taking the inverse kappa here, so everything combines to negative one half power, and then the negative from that fraction can go inside the square root. So all we do is switch places of the negative sign. Um, really, that's all we're trying to do. And what this shows us is that we already showed that uh, omega epsilon was much less than sigma, so we just got rid of that in another approximation. 
taking the inverse of that now via the negative one gives us square root of two over omega sigma mu. Uh, I, again, it's, I don't really like all these things, but numerically I put it all in Wolfram and it didn't matter. So with that, if we plug in uh, for sigma one over rho, then we get that uh, the skin depth here is equal to approximately two rho over um, two rho over omega mu sigma, or omega mu naught, excuse me. So if we plug everything from the resistivity and omega, which is two pi, uh, again we want angular, not a uh, linear frequency. We have then uh, a 6.3 uh, times 10 to the negative 7 meters or 6.3 times 10 to the negative 4 millimeters. Uh, again, according to Mathematica, the actual is about 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5. Um, uh, again, at this scale, I don't think it matters for what they're actually looking for. Uh, so plating this over at about a depth of 0 0.01 millimeters should be plenty and there's no point in making it any thicker since the fields don't penetrate much beyond this anyways thank you to attenuation um but again that approximation scheme uh is used heavily so be aware of the math behind it similarly the wavelength of the frequency is lambda equals 2 pi over k where k is equal to this nasty fraction once again and we'll just approximate it like we did in part B. Excuse me. Uh, push it all through, whatever. We see that is sigma is much greater than epsilon uh, omega and 1. So the approximation runs to 2 pi, square root of 2 over omega uh, sigma mu naught. Plug it all in again, uh, where omega is equal to um, 1 over rho, the resistivity, which is found in the table of chapter 7. And uh, what we see after is that we get a uh, wavelength of 0 0.41 millimeters. The propagation speed is can be found, rather, from lambda via V equal omega over K, um, where uh, K is equal to 2 pi lambda and omega is equal to 2 pi uh, nu. So the factors of 2 pi cancel and you're left with nu la uh, this uh, frequency, linear frequency, and the wavelength makes sense. One over seconds times meters. Um, and we see that the velocity is equal to 409 meters per second. And a vacuum, C over mu, is equal to 300 meters uh, for the wavelength. And the speed is equal to uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it definitely makes a difference. And uh, yeah, we're done. The only thing to pay attention to is these approximation schemes, which we'll see over and over and over again. All of the mathematics is there. I don't think you want to sit there and uh, maneuver that in your calculator. Always use a program to do it. Your calculator is going to throw a fit otherwise.